one day I go on the internet and there's a recommended video for me. It's called The Debate by Rav Mizrahi. I watched this on my own and for the first time I realized that I was wrong terribly about Christianity. It's not second best. It's completely fake. It's completely man-made, has zero truth in it. Nothing. I get excited, I bring this to my wife, and I tell her, you gotta watch this debate, it's really good, it's this, it's that. She's fine, fine, it's three parts of this debate, it's like three and a half hours. She's all right, I'll watch one part. So we watch this part. At the end of part one, I'm as excited as can be. I'm like, wow, do you realize what it's done? Well, the Christian is a moron, and the rabbi is arrogant. Not interested. But even though she's keeping mitzvot with me, she's keeping Shabbat with me, and she thinks there's problems with, she knows there's problems with Christianity. She always knew, even before me. The whole life, she created her own religion. After about a week of convincing and convincing and convincing, eventually, I convinced her to watch part two. But still not enough. She thinks the rabbi is still arrogant, and the Christian's still a moron. I'm running out of options. I try to convince her to watch part three, and until this day, she hasn't watched it. But something changed in between. So I try to convince her and convince her and convince her and our life is becoming hell. My pain continues, the money problems continue, the government issues continue. But one new additive that I never had a problem with, which is Shlom Bayit. We never had a fight, Baruch Hashem, until this happened. Now all of a sudden we're fighting every day. Not even about the religions, just about the fact that I'm being a little bit fanatic. To convince her that there's something wrong with it. Because now that I found out it's fake, I'm not thinking about saving me or this marriage. I'm thinking about saving her. For me, it's pikuach nefesh. It's like someone's in a fire and they don't know they're being burned. Someone's about to drink poison and you have to stop them. So eventually, enough tears, enough prayer, enough studying Torah, Baruch Hashem, and less and less work. Hashem has mercy and He sends me another video recommended. This one's called Torah and Science. Also by the same amazing, but until this point, was known as this arrogant rabbi. So then we watch part one of Torah and Science, is three parts. At the end of part one, we're both amazed. Whatever belief in emunah that I had, went up 500%. Whatever belief in emunah she had, also went up 500%. We've never seen the world the way he proved it. Two o'clock in the morning, we press on part two. Satan, as I said, he works really hard. Part two doesn't work. You go to another source, find the video, part two. Part two doesn't work, can't find part two. Of course, if you go right now to part two, you'll see part two works everywhere. But that day, it didn't work anywhere. Apparently, a very big tzaddikah was coming to Ami Israel. He couldn't let it happen. So, skipping from part one to part three was a really big stretch for me. It was really hard, my last tikkun. But I said, I finally got this girl to watch part one. She watched part two, uh, it's not working. I said, you know what? I can do it. Let's watch part three. We press part three and it works. We watch part three, it's amazing. And Muna goes from 500%, now we're closer to a thousand. Cause you're seeing Hashem. It's not about believing in Hashem. Believe anybody, it's, any moron can believe there has to be a creator. You don't have to be a genius to believe there has to be a creator. Even if you love science and you think everything came from some cell and it went into four cells and four cells became eight cells and somehow it became a fish and the fish grew legs and became a lizard, and the lizard somehow became so perfect, he became a monkey, and the monkey is here. Even if you believe in that, where did the first cell come from? Has to be a creator. Someone had to put the, the first cell in the world. You don't need to be a genius for that. But knowing God is what Hashem commands us. You need to know that I exist. Part three helped us know. Now she's telling me at the end of this lecture, we're both on a high, it's four, five o'clock in the morning now, you know, watching all popcorn, we're having a good time, we're discovering God, it's like the greatest thing in the world. He says, listen, uh, a lot of my questions have been answered, but I still need to know that it's allowed, I still need a sign from Hashem. Now generally, you're not allowed to ask for Hashem for signs. Just for anybody knows, Hashem does not allow us to ask for signs. You're not supposed to even look for signs. Not allowed. We're above the mazal. The stars are the mazal. We're above the mazal. Our actions dictate Hashem's actions. Whatever your mazal is, your actions can change it. If Hashem says, listen, right now his mazal is to lose all of his money. You do certain things, you can change it. As a Jew, you have a privilege to the rest of the world. You are above the mazal. Know that forever. So now, neither one of us obviously knew this. I need some type of sign, but she gets to a point where if anyone that's never met a convert should know that one of the reasons why Hashem mentions the convert more than anything else in the entire Torah, but doesn't just mention them. He mentions the special privilege they have in the world. He says, Jewish nation, we're, he's our father. But for the converts, 
I'm their father and their mother because they have nothing. When they convert, their parents are not considered their parents anymore, spiritually. Physically, they're still considered their parents. Biologically, they're still considered their parents. They're still supposed to honor their parents as long as their parents are not anti-Semitic. So I am their father and their mother. And he puts an obligation on Ami said to love the gear. You have to love converts, not just respect them. You're not even allowed to pressure them. Special treatment. Can't be a Jewish salesman with a convert. Problem with converts, problem that they go through is that in between leaving the lie and discovering the truth or accepting the truth, even after they've discovered it, they don't necessarily accept it right away, there's nothing. There's an empty spot in the middle where they have nothing. In this world, that's Gano. Because even if you believe a lie your whole life, you don't know it's a lie. So for you, it's true. Even if someone thought money is the cure for all diseases and all problems and everything in the world, despite the fact that it's a complete lie, as you've obviously seen from this story at this point so far, once you realize it's not, you have to replace it with something. So a lot of converts get to a very, very big mashbir, a very big dilemma, very big depression. And that's what my wife got to. And that night, she went to sleep and she prayed to Hashem, saying, either give me a sign or take me from this world.